Hello everyone, quick announcement before we jump into our series towards uh, or into the, the, the Foggling uh, project that we're doing. We just released a new course about environment design inside of Unreal. And for the next five days, it was actually, it, it started yesterday, so for the next four days, we're going to have 90% off in Udemy for that course. If you want to check it out, make sure to go down here in the description. I'm definitely going to be checking it out because environments is one of those things that I'm not super good at. So I'm, I'm really, really happy to have more resources to, to work with that. Now, uh, let's jump here onto the Fogling and uh, we're going to continue with the skinning process. I saw on the comments from the last video that some people were like, oh, I wish you the best because skinning sucks. And uh, yeah, skinning is actually, if, if I have to say what part of the whole process that we've done so far and the steps that we're still missing, skinning is definitely the one that I hate the most as well. But I'm going to try to make it as fun and as intuitive as possible so that we all understand how this works. So um, I'm going to do just a very, very quick like uh, example here. I'm going to grab this cylinder right here. And on the subdivisions height, I'm going to add like several subdivisions. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to rigging. I'm going to select, I'm going to create a chain of elements. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to select all of these elements, all of these chains, including the last one, or actually not the last one. I'm going to select this guy right here. I'm going to say skin, bind skin. I'll explain all of the details in just a second, but I just want to give you guys an idea or uh, I just want to show you how this works. So the way this works is once you create a connection between the joints and the geometry, the joints will move the geometry. If you remember from the first little video that we had about this topic, we mentioned that we were going to have joints, skin bind and the controllers, which is the last part that we're going to do after skinning. So as you can see, when I move this joint, all of the vertices that are influenced by that joint are going to be moved. And if I were to select multiple joints, we're going to be able to get this very nice, like smooth deformation that you're seeing right here. This is what we want to achieve with our character. And thanks to how we created the skeleton, it should be a fairly easy way to do it. So uh, let's jump onto that one. And uh, before I move any further, I just want to remind you guys, these three videos, yesterday's, today's, and probably tomorrow's, which is going to be controllers, depending on how we move with skinning, uh, all of this information is available in the rigging course that I uh, have or that we have in Udemy and in Skillshare. And you can check it in Skillshare for free. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here and Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. So, in order to skin this character right here, what we need to do, first of all, is we need to select which joints are going to have influence on the character. And some of you might be like, well, like every joint, right? We want every joint to have influence, but that's not really the... Um, the ideal scenario. Why not? Because as you can see, we have joints such as this guys right here, which are the tips that we don't want to move. Like if we move the tip, we don't want anything to move. We want this bone right here to move everything. You can see it's already moving. Thanks. I'm going to select the character. I'm going to go skin and I'm just going to say unbind skin. That way that we don't have any more skins. Very important. Make sure you uh, delete history before you do anything on your character so that things are clean. You can also see that uh, at some point the name changed. So let's just call this foggling underscore geo. There we go. So now that we have this, we need to decide which bones we need. And there are two ways to do that. I've worked in two different sort of pipelines. The first one is we keep the tip joints, but we we do not use them on the skinning process. We just have them for visual aid. And the second one is we delete the tip bones. I'm actually going to go for the second one because I think it's a little bit simpler to show you uh, this method. So we don't need this tip bones anymore uh, because this guy right here is the guy that's going to be influencing the, the rest of the tail. Uh, we do need all of the guys uh, right there on the top. We do need the eyes. We don't need this jaw. And we knew, we do need this one, which is the one that's going to move the claw. So now it's a lot easier because we can select every single joint right here. And we know all of these joints are going to have their skin attached or they're going to have influence on the body. There's no joint that's not going to have any uh, like uh, influence. 
We select all of the joints. Very important, do not select just one of them. You wanna select all of the joints except for the root joint. The root joint should not have any weight assigned to it. And then we select the character. As you can see, this character is one single character. It is possible to make multiple binds. So for instance, if you have a character with different pieces of armor, you could bind the pieces of armor as separate skin clusters so that you could like remove them or or, or just like hide them or something. Uh, but in this case, we're gonna keep everything as a, as a single one. Now that this is as a single one, we're gonna go to skin and we're gonna say bind skin, but we're gonna go to the options. There's a couple of options I would like you guys to use. These are the ones that uh, work for me, and uh, for this particular type of characters, it tends to give a good result uh, just right out of the box. So the first one is we're gonna bind to the selected joints, which uh, we've already explained. Second, the type of binding. Uh, there's a lot of them. I like the geodesic box, so I'm gonna show you how this one works. So the geodesic voxel was a thing that was introduced into Maya 2015, I think, a long time ago. Um, and what it does is as fo the following. It, it voxelizes your uh, object, and then it attaches the boxes that are closer to the joint to the joint itself. Now, why is this important? Well, a very common uh, like problem, I'm gonna go a little bit far away. A very common problem is when you have a character and it's on a V pose, and you bind the skin, this part of the chest, well, let me go, this part of the chest gets attached to the arm. And when you move the arm up, all of this part just like follows and it's very tedious to, to fix it. So with the voxels, we make sure that it only follows like a, a more logical way, a more logical um, like interpolation or something. And it gives us just like smoother, cleaner results. So I'm gonna keep it a geodesic voxel. The skinning method is gonna be classic linear, that's fine. The normalized weights, this is gonna be interactive, that's fine. Weight distribution, distance is fine. Max influences, I personally like to bring it down to four. I don't want to have so many influences. The more influences you have, the more like subtlety you can have on your rig. But for a character like this, four is fine. Even three might be fine, but I think four is a good number. Um, I do want to colorize my skeleton just for visual eighth. And the, the resolution right now, 256, is it's perfectly fine. So we just hit apply. And as you can see, it does the process. It computes the whole thing. And there we go. Our geodesic voxel has worked. So how do we know it works? Well, if I select any joint and I rotate it, you can see how this joint is moving different parts of the element. If I select this guy, for instance, and I rotate it, you can see how this thing is moving different parts of the geometry. Same one for this. And here's a cool part. These are the ones that we're gonna be using to, to like scale and move around and uh, and create like interesting animations later on once we have the, the control rig. And the geodesic voxel actually does a very nice job. You can see me uh, here, I'm selecting all of the tail. And if I like rotate this, oh, like this, you can see that's a really nice like a bend. Like it's it's not bad. It's not giving us a, a bad result whatsoever. I can even grab like the little legs right here. And if I rotate, look at that. Like that's pretty good. Now someone yesterday, and this is something I forgot to, to comment at the beginning of the video, asked if it was okay for the axis to be reversed or flipped on the other side? And the answer is yes. And the reason why we want or why we do the mirror and why we select behavior on the mirror when we do the joints is exactly to, to do this. So that I can select both elements right here. And if I rotate on one axis, they will do a mirror behavior. So as you can see right there, that's working perfectly fine. We can grab uh, this legs right here. Let's try the the other two legs, and this is the the like the main thing that we need to do when we're doing uh, like skinning. We need to test and see how uh, good or not things are moving. So for instance, this guy, I think it's doing a very good job. The one thing I don't like is pulling some things uh, up here. So we might need to fix those. Let's try this little legs right here. There we go again, like pulling a little bit up there. It's not bad though, right? Like it looks like like muscles or something. So it doesn't look that bad, but we might be able to smooth it out a little bit. Let's check the arm now. And the arm, we can definitely see that it has some, some issues, but especially like on the chest area, it's doing quite a nice job. Look at that, beautiful. Now where we're gonna start seeing issues is for instance on the jaw. If I select the jaw right here and I move it, you can see that the jaw is moving. It's not moving the whole jaw and it's moving things in a, in a weird sort of way. So um, the way you're gonna be working with skin paint is by using a tool called Paint Skin Weights. And the, there's again, different like philosophies or pipelines to follow. I like to go from the things that are like uh, the most, like the outer edges, like the hands and fingers and legs, and then go towards the center. Because as you saw here, the center is actually doing quite a nice job with the, with the deformation. It's not bad, especially for a little character like this, it's, it's not bad. But there are other things such as like this guy right here that's moving things that I don't want it to move, right? So um, the way this works is 
it's tedious. I'm not gonna lie. It's a little bit tedious, but uh, here we go. I'm gonna go skin and I'm gonna open the paint skin weights tool. And this is the tool that we're gonna be using, as the name implies, to uh, paint the skins of the different elements. So for instance, hips. You can see that right now, this is the hip bone, right? The main bone, it moves everything. Uh, but if we could move it, let's select this guy again, you're gonna see that these are the influences that the hip has. And I really don't want any influence uh, up here. It, it makes no sense. So what I need to do here is I need to go to my value, select replace and paint out all of this information. This is the tedious part. Now, of course, we can go to the stroke options and change, for instance, the radius to make it a little bit bigger and we can just paint out all of these things. Now, I don't like like painting out because it takes forever. I prefer painting in. So that's why I prefer the technique that I'm about to show you where I go to each specific element. Let's start with the, the jaw, for instance. I go to the jaw and I say, okay, I know that I want this a jaw bone to control the whole jaw geometry and nothing else, right? So we select the geometry, we select the jaw bone, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flood to zero. You can see value set to zero, replace, and I hit flood. So now the jaw has no influence. The jaw is not moving anything. All of that weight had, uh, goes somewhere, and that's one of the tricky parts. It, it goes somewhere, and we can't really control where it goes. It tries to go to the closest joints, of course, but if it doesn't, it just goes like everywhere. But no worries, we're gonna, we're gonna fix that. Now we go, for instance, to select. I like using this. We go select. We double click one vertex here, and that selects the whole jaw. We go back to paint, and I set the value to one, and I hit flood. So now what I'm telling is, hey, I want you, a uh, jaw joint, to move all of the vertices in the jaw geometry. And thanks to the way we build this character by like splitting the jaw, it makes it a little easier because we don't have to worry about like smooth deformation. Everything's gonna move as a solid object. Now there's one option that I did turn on, like the use color ramp. So white means full influence and black means no influence. So you can see now that the jaw joint has full influence on the jaw geometry and no influence anywhere else. So now, if I were to select this jaw joint and move it, look at that. It moves perfectly and it's only moving that section. So that is working perfectly fine. Let's go back here. Now, when you're done with one of this, one of the things that you can do is you can go to the uh, jaw uh, joint again. Where is it? Here. And you can lock it. What that does is it locks the, um, the painting option. So even if we have value set to one and I try to paint, well, it shouldn't allow me to paint. That's weird. Uh, but it, it, it should not allow any weights to go in there, which is, it's important. Now let's go to the head. And you can see, for instance, here, the head is not bad. But again, if we select the head, here's where, where you need to do a little bit of animation. I'm going to select the joint. I'm going to go to frame zero and I'm going to press S. I know frame zero is beneath my, my head here. Uh, but just hit S on the keyboard. Hey. Ah, that's really weird. It's not letting me set an, uh, okay, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just going to do this manually. I'm just going to key select it. And then I'm gonna go to frame, let's say 10 right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna move the head a little bit like this, like rotate the head a little bit. Like this is the, the kind of like a, a movement I would expect from the head maybe when, when it tries to attack or something. So once I have this, I can see how this thing changes and I can see how the weight is changing as well. So if I go back to the paint tools, I can be like, hey, you know what? Like we might need to smooth this thing a little bit more. So we can go to the smooth option. Let's grab a bigger radius and we can start smoothing this section. Okay, so by smoothing, we're, we're like softening the way the weights are being like distributed along the surface of this uh, character's head. And uh, and we're well, just giving it a, a softer, softer distribution. Okay, so, so something like this. Not bad, as you can see, it's looking a little bit better. And you might need to do this and brush this like quite a bit. You can see there's like a really, really an intense one right here, intense distortion. But it's fine. Now, another thing that we might benefit from uh, doing is assigning the material. Um, let's do just a mesh display. Well, uh, it's just modeling, mesh display, soften edge. There we go. Just to make sure that we don't get the sort of like effect. There we go. So now you can see the head moves and it doesn't look that weird. It looks a little bit weird here. We might like just decide not to have as much influence here, uh, but I think it's, it's fine for this like first pass. So let's bring in the textures real quick. I'm actually gonna pause the video to to um, to do the whole texture same thing so that it doesn't go that long. Uh, we've all done this already on the texturing video, by the way, we did the render setup. So just go to that one if you if you missed this one. Give me one sec. There we go. So we have this setup. I'm gonna turn off the ACES thingy 
or there's another one, this Untone Map sRGB is going to give you the, the closer lights. And this is just so that we can see how this is like moving. So as you can see, like this movement right here is not that bad. It doesn't really break any textures. Yes, it's a little bit intense right here, uh, but we can again like soften it up or, or modify it. That's that's the way skinning works. Let's go to the eye because the eye is an important one. So if we go to the eye here and we rotate it, you can see it rotates the whole head. We don't want that. So I'm going to go select the object right now. I'm going to go here, double click and we're gonna look for the left eye. So left eye right here. And you can see the left eye has a lot of influence everywhere. So if we flood this again, if we paint, replace, flood to zero, we remove all of that influence and all of that influence has to go somewhere. So maybe now we'll get, as you can see, a softer, a little bit of a softer distribution here because all of the, the weight that the eye had is now on the head. Again, that's the, the weight like jumps or, or, or weights jump around. Now, going back to the eye, we can go to select, double click this guy, go back to paint, and the eyeball, we want this to be flat to, uh, to a full, like, full, full F effect. And then I'm going to go point one, and uh, I don't want to select anymore, I want to go back to paint, and we're going to paint with point one and a smaller brush, so let's go stroke, I want to paint a little bit of the eyelids. So just a little bit there, as you can see. So what's going to happen now is if I grab this eye and I move it, it's going to move a little bit of the eye. See that? Look at that. Beautiful, right? It's going to give us a very nice, like, soft movement. It's going to make the character look a little bit more alive. Now, one more thing we can do, of course, is we can go back here. Well, let's let's go back to, to zero rotation. There we go. And uh, we can smooth. We can smooth all of this weight a little bit so it doesn't look like a... Like a, like a weird effect. It just looks a little bit more natural like this. Okay, so we have the eye, we have uh, the jaw working properly, and uh, the head. Unfortunately, this eye is working properly, but this eye is not working properly. So is there a way we can fix this? And the answer is yes. We can just select the object and we can go to um, the skinning uh, menus again. Go to skin and we can mirror skin weights across the y, uh, z axis from, from positive x to negative uh, uh, x, and we can just say apply. What that should do, like the jaw, again, should be perfectly fine. The head should be perfectly fine. This eye should be perfectly fine as well. It's, it's not fine. It got some, <laughs> some weird weights over there. And that's, again, that's one of the unfortunate things about the the whole process. I'm going to change this. Uh, let's see. Let's go back here. Okay, the eye there is is working nicely. Let's try instead of let's try. Let's do one to one instead of closest joints, and then closest joints. Um, let's apply. Let's see if that works a little bit better. That's really weird. As you can see, there's like a like a center line there that's being painted, but that's not a problem. And the reason why this is not a problem is because we can go back to the head, go back to paint mode. Again, select the head, which is the one that has all of the influence right now. You can see, well, you can see that's the eye. I think what's trying to, what's happening here, it's trying to copy the weights that the other eye had, which is really annoying. Let me go back and fix that. It shouldn't be doing that. Okay, let's try this again. Let me check why this is not working. Give me one second. No, so I really can't figure out why it's not doing that. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments because I'm a little bit lost here uh, in regards to that specific uh, phenomenon. But what I can do here is I can actually go to the right eye and then what I can say, oh, this is what's happening. Okay, so as you can see, there is positive influence of the right eye over here. So I'm just going to replace everything and flood this to zero. So now the right eye has absolutely no influence. The left eye should have influence. There we go. So now technically, technically, if this works as I think it should work, just mirror skin weights. And there we go. Now only the eye is moving. So that was a problem. The problem was that this right eye had some influence on the left side or on the positive side, and that value was being, being like uh, flipped. So you always want to make sure that that does not happen. There we go. So again, jaw is working fine. Eye is working fine. Head is working fine. That's a nice, nice deformation there for the head. Go back to zero. Always zero your joints. Like we're doing this to, to test them out, but we always want to zero the joints. In the rotation, you might find some information on the translation. That's fine. Uh, that, that's normal. Uh, let's check the legs real quick. 
So I'm going to grab all of the legs, actually. Just going to give it a quick test to see whether or not they're right. Now, another like thing, and, and this is a little bit more like production oriented, but another thing that like frequently happens is people people freak too much about the like the proper skinning, but you need to understand that creatures in games, in movies, or any any character will have certain amount of range of movement, right? So if you're doing a super wacky game where the character is gonna be moving and stretching and doing a lot of things, then yeah, you need your deformation to be like super, super precise. But if it's just like a character that's gonna be doing this, like this little guy right here, he may do this and this, and then he may just like fall back and move the legs, then we don't need to make sure that the leg can go all the way to the top and touch the, the, the carapace or things, right? So you always need to, to like balance out how much can you push the rig to do things that you want it to do. So for instance here, the one, the only thing I don't like is this like really big deformation that we have right here, but this is mainly due to this one right here, the, the back of the, of the character. So I'm going to grab this guy. We're going to go over here and we're going to look for the fog, fog link back. There we go. And you can see it's losing a little bit of influence here. And it's fine. I, I think it's fine to, to have like a soft like deformation. I just want to smooth it out a little bit more. So again, we go to stroke, bigger brush. And we just smooth this out a little bit more. So now if I select this like right here and I move it, see that's that's way, way too much influence. I don't want that. So let's go back here. And uh, what I need is I need this guy to have a little bit more like influence here. So I'm going to go to add and we're going to add point to value. What this will do, as you can see here, it will add more value to all of this area, which is pretty much what I want. Then we smooth, and we can also smooth all of this so that the transitions are, well, smoother, softer, right? Let's go to add again. I definitely want all of this to be modified only by the, by the care pass. So we smooth again, especially here. We benefit quite a bit from, from smoothing. Now we check. A little bit better. Now you can see that I, I that's looking a little bit weird. So let's go to the leg A. This one right here. You can see it's this guy's right there, like all of those points. So I'm gonna go to replace and I'm gonna bring this down to zero. So I, I don't wanna have weight there. So you pretty much have to paint each specific vertex. Then we can smooth it a little bit as well. There we go. Now let's take a look. So as you can see, there's a little bit of weight there. That's uh, unfortunate. Let's go back here. Go uh, replace with zero and just click. Let's check again. Okay, so there's like a like a really crazy vertex right there. And that this sometimes happens, like sometimes you will find one vertex that's not doing what you want. You can go to skin and there's an option called prune small weights which will eliminate all of the small weights that you have. So, but in this case, it's not there. So, yeah, I think I've pinpointed where it is, which is right there. So let's go back to paint. And sometimes it's not there. Sometimes it's like on the next one, which is what I'm guessing, like on the knee or on the claw. There we go. See, it's the claw. So for some weird reason, this claw down here is influencing all of these things right here. And that's actually unfortunate because I don't want... I don't think we needed those claws. I should have erased them uh, earlier, but we're a little bit too far ahead now. So we'll just delete that and that's fine. So this guy right here will move the little leg. That's fine. This guy right here will move this. That's fine. This guy, let's bring it back there. That's fine. Even a, a little bit of stretch right there, it's, it's fine. Uh, the tail, let's take a look at the tail. So all of these bones are, are the tail bones. Okay, that's that's really good. I like that. If we don't want this to move the legs, we we're gonna need to to move, modify things. But I think it's, it looks good. This one right here, this is where where we might need a little bit more weight. So let's go here, and uh, let's go to poison tail A. There we go. We're gonna replace with one, and we pretty much want the tail to fully follow that bone right there. As you can see, the, the paint tool is not that bad. It will, like, it knows that uh, we're only painting on this, like, geometry, which is quite, quite useful. Poison tail B. There we go. We paint this one right here. There we go. So now, this thing's right here will only move those little sections. Which, again, will give us a little bit of control if we want to do, like, some sort of animation. 
Now, uh, let's take a look at this guy right, uh, again. So it's not bad, but I'm not sure if I want the, this bone to move everything here on the on the head because it, it does look a little bit weird. I think it might be the option. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to go back here. Let's go to the uh, fog link back. And let's start adding more influence on this area right here. So I'm going to add, let's start with a 0.1. And let's add a little bit more influence on this area. And then less smooth, of course. Remember that influences will be like moving from one point to another, which is again, quite normal. Oh, wait, my bad. I was using the bent A base. That's not what we want. Let's control C, there we go. So, back, bent A base, there we go. So back, there we go. So again, we just add, a little bit more influence here on the front. Like I do want the head to move it, but I also want the back to move it. Let's try an F again, 0.1, and then a smooth. So now the back, there we go. That's a little bit more, a little bit better, I think. And the head should still move a little bit of this as well. I think I want just a tad bit more. So I'm gonna go back here especially here on the on the tip there we go and we smooth same here like let's paint a little bit and smooth that's a lot better it's a little bit cartoonish but it's fine and we should still have some weight on the head so so you can see the head still moves the carapace just a little bit, just to give us some flexibility. Now, this guy right here, this guy's, as you can see, it's moving a little bit too much of the carapace, I think. So, so we can delete some of that. Let's go back here. Let's go to the bent A. And I'm going to replace... I'm going to scale in this case, and you can scale by minus 0.2, for instance. And that's kind of like removing, like you're multiplying negatively, so you're removing some influence. There we go. A lot better. Now this one's what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to be scaling them. So I just want to make sure that the, that the scale works nicely. I think the tips need a little bit more weight. So let's go again to the top. Let's add. And then let's smooth. You know, this thing should properly like scale up and down. See that? So so we can animate this like puffing out things. Careful there, as you can see, there's like a like a little bit that's uh, pointing there. So to clean that, it's right there. Same for all. If you see any crazy weights, you definitely want to go replace a zero and just paint that way out. There we go. Let's go to the next uh, top. This one right here. Same thing. Let's. If you see weights in crazy areas. Want to remove them because we don't want them to be animating something and then that's something moving play things in in other places, right? There we go. Let's add something like that. I think works. And let's go to this one right here. There we go. Again, let's go replace zero. I need to make the brush a little bit smaller. It's pretty much per vertex, as you can see right here. So I need to hit the exact vertex to really paint out the, the information. It's very important that we do so because, again, we don't want things to be animating when they're not supposed to be animating. There we go. So now if I grab this guy, this guy, and this guy, and I scale them all, I'm gonna be able to to do this effect where this thing just like puffs air, right? And technically, we should be able to do the same on this middle ones. Not as much, right? Like it's gonna be probably like something like that, and then the the upper ones will do like a, a better job. But there we go. So uh, on the claw, finally, that's just I think the claw is the final thing. As you can see, it's moving really weirdly. So let's just look for the claw. There we go. Left claw, not not that one. 
Left glow, there we go. So first of all, let's paint out the weight that's not supposed to be there. There we go. I like a little bit of weight there. Let's go to select. We're going to select all of these points. And then we're going to go back to paint. One and fluff. There we go. So now this joint, as you can see, will move the claw like on its own. And of course, this thing, since it's connected, will move everything else. This thing will move everything else. And uh, yeah, that should be it. Let's save real quick. Now let's do a quick skin, mirror skin weights. Because I want to make sure that things are moving nicely. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's take a look at the eye. Okay, the eye is moving like an area that I don't want to be moved, as you can see right here. So we need to fix the eye. That looks good. Let's grab the tail. That looks good. So it's probably just the eye. Let's go here. Paint. Let's go to the left eye. There we go. So again, when you delete uh, like information, it sometimes jumps to other places it shouldn't. Like ideally, you would like this to jump to like the the most obvious place, which is the the bone that's closest to it. But I don't know why it does it. There are other tools out there, by the way, on the market. Um, however, they are paid tools. There's one called NG Skin Tools, really good. Um, but yeah, since it's paid, I, I like to show like first how it's done like traditionally out of the box without any other um, any other type of things. There we go. Uh, and then, then we go. So now the only thing we need to make sure is any of the bonds that we move, we need to bring them back to zero. That's very, very important because on the next video, guys, we're going to jump onto the creation of the uh, rig controller, the control rig, which is the, the thing we're actually going to be moving. So I'm just going to very quickly check to make sure all of the little like legs and things are set to zero. Technically, I should be able to select all of them and just set the rotations to zero and the scales to one. And that should do it. Don't move the scale, the, the, um, the translations though. Those, those need to be like where they are. So there we go. Zeros and ones. There we go. So now our character should be back to, to basic. Now, I know this was not the, the funnest video. I know it's, it's one of those things that I really don't like to do. It's, uh, it's a little bit tedious, but it's part of the process. You need to do it, and it's a lot of tweaking. You might be animating and find out that there are a couple of parts that don't animate as well as you might have liked, and that you need to go back and refix the weights. Very important, once the character has been posed, you can see here that we have a poly soft edge. That's the smooth edge that I added, and we have the skin cluster. You should never, ever, ever, ever. And I even, oh my God, I even get sneezes out because it makes me so mad when people do this. You should never, never delete history of this character because if you delete history, what's going to happen is you are going to lose your skin cluster. Like if I do delete history, skin cluster, bye bye, and all of the things that you did, it's gone. So how do we clean this polysoft edge without removing the skin cluster? You're going to go to modify. Delete by type, or sorry, uh, edit, delete by type, none the former history. And that should remove, as you can see, the poly edge, the poly soft edge, without removing the skin cluster. Okay? Let's save this real quick. We should have two things right now. We should have a group with the geo and a like a whole like network of elements. And now we're ready to go onto the controllers. I'm actually going to record this back to back, but I'm going to release this one tomorrow um, because we're getting close to Christmas and I want to try and line up the Christmas gift with the final like animation presentation. So yeah, that's it for this one, guys. Make sure to leave a like, make sure to share, subscribe, you know, if you want to get any of our courses, that's what keeps us going. Thank you very much for all of your support and I'll see you back tomorrow with more. Bye-bye.